Rich, it seems everyone I talk to, everyone on the internet is talking about it, wherever you go. The debt ceiling and, and what the U.S. is going to do about that and what they have done about it. What are your thoughts on the debt ceiling resolution? Yeah, um, probably counter to the mainstream thoughts, uh, I got to tell you, Charlotte. You know, uh, um, for a month now, the arguably the greatest nation on earth uh, with the strongest currency on earth uh, is figure, trying to figure out how they could pay their bills. Um, I think it's very sad and dysfunctional. Um, and in the end, they, the Republicans and the Democrats here in America came to a resolution. They agreed to, uh, you know, uh, stop the suspension of student loan payments. They uh, added some work requirements for the SNAP and TANF programs. So that's supplemental nutrition assistance program and temporary assistance for the needy families programs. So now that they're going to require some work requirements in order to get those benefits. Uh, they have a PAYGO system, which means, you know, you can go ahead and add some costs to the budget, but you have to take it away from somewhere else. Uh, they did protect Social Security, the military, and Medicare, uh, and they made some cuts to the IRS. But in the end, the most important provision was they said, okay, instead of $34.1 trillion in debt, we can go higher. We can have more debt. We can take more debt on. And I think that's a, a lack of leadership. It's a lack of character. And there's no no backbone in our, in our elected officials in Washington, D.C., because they've elected to kick the can dirt further down the road. And I absolutely believe that America died a little bit further here this past month, this past week. Yes, I would agree. And the effect it's having on everybody, I mean, if you just take it, if you look at yourself in your own household and you would do that to yourself, what's it going to do? So why is it okay for a country to do it? And it's not okay for you to do it in your home. Well, because it's not okay. Right. I mean, it's very simple. Well, some it's people not think it's okay, okay. <laughs> to spend more than you take in. We can't do it yeah. as individuals. We can't do it as corporations. Our government can't do it either. It doesn't uh, operate under a separate, you know, law of, uh, you know, reality uh, that allows that. You nobody can tell me that taking on more debt makes you more profitable and more financially sound. No way on earth. Not ever. Nowhere. Um, so, you know, despite that background, the dollar is moving up, believe it or not. Uh, it went from 101 to 104 on the U.S. dollar index when you compare it against other major currency trading partners. And gold and silver are going down. Can you believe this? Um, I can, because there's a couple different things at play here. You know, you would think if you just look at the debt ceiling, which is, you know, again, dominated every paper, that you would think the dollar would weaken and gold would, would increase. Um, but what's happening is people are looking at the overall economy and they're saying, okay, the numbers that are coming in, inflation continues to be stubborn and maybe even ticked up a little, right? Um, so that tells the Fed that, hey, we have room to go higher with interest rate cuts. Um, in addition, the jobs numbers came out, if you believe them, I don't, but if you believe them, they, they're much higher than anticipated, uh, which means that they haven't broken the economy yet, which allows them to raise interest rates. And you know, the thought process is if interest rates go higher, it's a negative environment for gold. So in the short term, you're seeing the dollar flex its muscles and you're seeing gold and silver pull back down below 2000 on gold, below $24 on silver. And I, you know, I probably sound like a broken record, but I just think it's a buying opportunity because long-term, as I stated earlier, you don't become more prosperous by taking on debt that you can't afford to pay back. Um, so in the end, the only way out of that is to inflate the currency. And when you inflate the currency, it takes more of those worth less dollars to buy gasoline, milk, eggs, gold, silver. I think if you if you buy in here, you're getting a great price and you're buying well. And, you know, I wouldn't go counter to the short term trend. I'd, I'd blaze a new trail and start building your uh, your uh, central bank vault in your home. That's good. Is there anything else that you wanted to say? Uh, no, I just think, uh, you know, in the short term, you know, things can go counter than what people believe. And that's what we're seeing right now. But I wouldn't lose heart. I mean, if if you ever wonder where gold is going in the future. And you understand that we, we measure it with mismanaged fiat currencies, whether they be yen or euro or dollars, it really doesn't matter. Um, as long as we're measuring it with mismanaged fiat, the overall trend of gold is up. 
it'll go like this along the way, but ultimately it is going up. Just Google, go to your Google machine and pull up a chart of the US dollar versus gold, yen versus gold, you know, um, euro versus gold from 1900 to present. And it will tell you everything you need to know about whether you should or should not own gold for the long term. And I'll give you a spoiler alert. The answer is own gold. <laughs>